up, everyone? It's Timorja, and we're back for another episode of Black and Indie. And so I always have my lovely co-host with me, Miss Erda. How are you feeling? Really good. Awesome. D, how you feeling? Awesome. Bet. Erda, so, okay, I do have a quick question. How do you say your last name? Phil's. Phil, okay. All right. I didn't know if it was like like Phyllis or Fees. No. You or know, you Phyllis. never could, you never know. I, gotta I mean, ask. like, people be getting fancy. <laughs> I feel like here's the real pronunciation. Like, if you were to read it in French, it's Fees. But uh. my first name is already throwing people off that I was just like, you know what? Let me just go with the phonetic Make English. Make them work. Make them work. Listen, <laughs> no, I get it. Uh, yeah. I feel yeah. it. Yeah. I, uh. I like saying her name, though. I try, no, to no. Say, I try to say the, the, Asian, the Haitian E. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's Erda? Erda. 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 It'll come naturally. It sounds very Creole. I'm like, yes, connecting to my roots. <laughs> 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 nah, I feel it. Uh, I guess we sort of take it off. D, what you got? So uh, this week, I um, I stumbled upon uh, someone's album, A.D.'s Carson's, yeah. uh, based on my homework for one of my classes. And his album had me thinking about feel-good music. Because, mm. like, I'll sit around and I'll have conversations with, like, my aunts, my mom, and my grandma. And, you know, they kind of, like, argue that music lacks substance nowadays. Mm. And, like, there's no longer a valuable message to the audiences. And I'm like... Well, that's not true. Um, I know someone who did their dissertation on rap uh, last year, and I was like, oh, my God. Like, uh, on Ravon. Campus? Yeah. Who did? Ravon Barnes. She sure did. Yeah. That's, I, want, I told her I wanted to come back and do something. Uh, I wanted to come back and do something with this. Okay. Mm. Yeah, but um, A.D. Carson's, his album just reminded me of Lauren Hill's Miss Education. Uh, and I was like, I was just feeling so nostalgic. And I know somebody might look at me very weird, like, girl, you were born in 2000s, but by heart, I am an old soul. Wait, you were born in and 2000s? Yes. Wait, you Ooh. were for real? Yes, that's what I'm saying. People probably be like, oh, what do God. you know about that album? I don't think we can hang out anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my God. It's, you know what? Oh, I'm embarrassed myself. Wait, hold on, wait, wait, what year, though? Lauren Hill's No, album. no, no, what year were you born? You said in 2000. In like, 2000. Oh, literally, like. Two. Oh, oh, oh. That's crazy to me. Yes. My age is with a year. To me, you should be 10. I don't know. I like, know, you should right? be like five. I don't like, know. I don't. That, that, that hit I'm me not 10. Don't Two do that. Years. Okay. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but anyways, I just wanted to, like, get y'all's insight on, on feel-good music. Like, where are you guys going to get away from the rap, the twerking, or whatever it is that y'all are listening to, yeah. to just listen to some music that makes you reflect and think and, and feel good? No, I feel it. Because one thing about it, so A.D. Carson, so he, for those who, you know, who have been keeping up with Black at Indy. He came to, uh, he was a part of our second, no, I'm sorry, the end of our first season. Uh, and he was on the episode called Blacks in the Arts. And so him being a hip hop professor, which is something I've never heard of mm -hmm. until I researched him. Um, and I actually got to know him through his uh, See the Stripes uh, uh, project that he had when he was at Clemson. Needless to say, you should check it out if you don't know who he is, but uh, very knowledgeable. And he's out of uh, Decatur, Illinois, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm, yeah. So um, real uh, personable, real down-to-earth kind of guy. Uh, I like him. I mean, we keep in touch from time to time as well, too. So I shot him a text earlier. I was like, hey, man. And like, I know he's coming to speak on campus, mm -hmm. well, virtually tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm looking forward to you know, checking that out a little bit as well, too. But to answer your question, some feel good music that I go to, I'm always a P.J. Morton fan, hands down. Uh, P.J. Morton is my guy. If I'm like just sort of chilling around the house or cleaning up, which is when I'm gonna listen to most of my music, there's Lauren Hill, there's PJ Moore, and I'll go back to maybe listen to some Sherilyn, uh, Phyllis Hyman, uh, always Donny Hathaway, always Donny Hathaway, um, uh, uh, Billy Preston. So I mean, I, I got a list of stuff, uh, but I mean, it just, it just like, it gets you in the mood sometimes to just chill, sometimes it puts you in the mood to clean. Like music has different responses for, for different activities. And that's just the beauty of music. It's therapeutic. Very much. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like this is when I do my classic, I am from Haiti. <laughs> <laughs> hey, give us some Haitian artists. Where I'm like, well, I listen to a lot of French like rap and just a lot of I've French I've never listened music. to any. It's really good. And I think this is like one of those weird um, debates or whatever where people are like, if rap isn't in English, then it's not like yeah. in the, like or like rapping even with a British accent. It's it's yeah. like, somehow doesn't hit as hard. <laughs> <laughs> or if you're rapping in French, like it just doesn't. But I don't know. It works for me, yeah. and I I really like it. Um, and I think it's just a really like that that that's the kind of stuff that I go to yeah. on a normal basis, and my playlist just shifts from wherever. <laughs> did, you, did you grow up around it, or did you just sort of I did not. Into it? I think this was after I spent a year in France, and then it was oh, just, okay. like, seeped into me. And then, like, also after spending some time in Kosovo, 
I started listening to Albanian rap, and that is also really good. It's interesting, interesting because I would like to hear the slabification between American rap and then French rap, and I guess, uh, what you said, what's the other rap? Albanian. Albanian rap. Um, yeah, yeah, because the syllable stress is all, I guess I'm getting into my professional, but the syllable <laughs> stress also plays um, it's like the rhythm. Yeah. Like the, where the, and, and, yeah. Like, and like the cadences of their mm -hmm. phrases. But I guess it all, all it would need to make sense to me because, well, I would have to make it make sense because I need to know what the language is in order for me to actually understand what's going on. Yeah. But yeah, yeah it's, it's interesting. Good. It's good. I, I really enjoy it. And so. so is it like actually in French or yeah. is it some of, oh, nice. yeah, you speak French? French? Uh, oui, un petit, je sais, dans les français. Okay, okay, all right. Well, okay, so if, if someone was to walk up to you on campus and they are French, could you hold a full conversation or just yeah. like bits and pieces? Yeah, full uh, conversation. Uh, I, I so lived there cool. for a year. I, you learn French in Haiti as a I was just child. about to say, is it like very similar in terms of like Creole? Yeah, yeah. so I will say like it, it's similar, but a, a, a Haitian person speaking Creole would not be able to understand a French person speaking French and vice versa mm. unless they knew the other language. But there's a lot of borrowed terms, there's a lot yeah. of like words that are just said in like a different accent, all that. But you just, it, it's two separate and completely different languages. So, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Cause I have this one friend in undergrad, shout out to Casey Eugene, mm -hmm. like uh, who's Haitian. And so, you know, she spoke English like on campus, but when she mm -hmm. would speak to her mom or they would get into like some. Deep conversation, she'll get out. Oh like Casey, translate, please. <laughs> <laughs> but she was like yeah. so deep in it. But like mm -hmm. to flip back and forth between the two, have you ever got to a, a place where? Or let me ask you this: mm -hmm. Like for example, whenever we go to like um, like to get a manicure, or pedicure, you know, people they'll go from English to whatever their language is. I'm like, yeah. have you ever had a situation where you've had to go between languages, or it just like comes yeah. out naturally? Yeah, I mean, I did some work in Haiti, like for my family own, owns a nonprofit there, and what we do is bring American missionaries to Haiti and other like nonprofit workers. Um, and so there, were, I was literally doing like liaison, like translating between like English and uh, Creole, but then also just like speaking Creole in one sentence and then turning and speaking English. Uh. And it's I don't know, at least for me at this point, like they both feel very native and very fluent to I me. Like um, I think with French, because I just haven't been immersed, like I speak Creole with my parents every day. So like okay. that's always gonna be with me, okay. but I don't have a lot of opportunities to speak French because what am I, <laughs> I'm here in America. Like, mm. do you know what I mean? All this uh, stuff. And so it takes me some time to get back into it, but I always have, I'm gonna say a good 35 minutes of French conversation in me like oh, before I'll start. I losing it, it yeah. I mean, with it, like they said, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. So yeah. I mean, that's cool. It absolutely. No, that's cool. It's true. I don't. I don't know if y'all like follow. I'm a. I'm a, a big fan of Viola Davis. Like How to Get Away with Murder. Cool. I watch it from that's beginning my girl. to yeah. end. That's my girl. Uh, anything she does, I, I'm. I'm right there front row center. But have y'all seen like the ads for her playing Michelle Obama in yes. First Lady? She got that lip is all she? the way right. <laughs> Does she have the arm? Yes. What movie no. is this? It's, it's going to be on Showtime. Uh, it's called It's First Lady. Uh, oh, it's and about Michelle. Yeah, about Michelle. Uh, Michelle Tell Obama, me, so. I got to show you a picture yeah. now so you Forget can see Obama. her. Oh my God. Yeah, so it, it's pretty. Uh, it's pretty realistic. Yes. So it'll come out actually Showtime in the spring of twenty two. Mm -hmm. um, it's, and it's called Becoming, to study the former first lady's gestures, which explains yeah. the uncanny resemblance and so forth and so forth. But It's her book, right? Her yes. Her book was called Becoming? Yes, yeah. exactly. Oh, exactly. I'm glad. So the fact that Michelle's getting a movie before Obama, there's no Obama movie, right? Uh, they, well, they have show. a similar, no, not, not just an Obama movie. <gasps> it's the lip for me. It's truly the, the <laughs> hair. It's the lip. It's a tight oh, lip. Oh my God, that Michelle O'Hate hair. Yeah. Oh. We gotta yeah. put that up in there. Yeah, no, she, <laughs> she's I'm excited. giving. Oh, that's I love that for us. Nah, yeah, no, seriously, no, it'll be pretty cool. And another thing too, have y'all heard about the Travis Scott thing that's going on or that happened? Yeah, yeah, with the the stampede and the yeah. yeah, yeah. So, where were the security guards? I guess they got trampled too. I think no. okay. So what I heard is that there was pretty much like a large staff walkout, like either the night before, or like a couple days before. Oh, so okay. that's what I've heard, unconfirmed. Read your own sources. Um, that like a lot of the security guards and other like support staff for the venue or whatever just were not there because there's a labor shortage because people are demanding higher wages because of all this other stuff. Yeah. Um, and so that led to everyone being strained. But then it was like. And I, I was kind of having this discussion with some friends about was it a lack of communication of like the people who knew because the concert kept on going yeah. while people had yeah. already like died and while there was a you know massive crisis happening, um, and so was it like 
the people who could have stopped the concert didn't know or were they just like callous and were like true the, the show must go on yeah. slash you know i don't know and from yeah. the article it said like it went on 40 minutes after yeah, um like 40 minutes after, i'm looking at the picture here so there's the main stage there's the crowd barriers <coughs> And then it says the crowd surges against the barriers, and, and behind there is the camera tower and the control area. So I can see literally how they can push this thing down and, and get that close to the stage, but to the point where people lose their lives. Is it really that serious? Yeah. But then also, like, Travis was apparently egging the crowd on and telling them to ignore security and telling them to, you know. No, that's on you, bro. That. If that's what you did, then. then yeah, that, I, didn't, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't hear any videos like that, but when I did see a video of people standing on police cars as, like, that a part. police car was in a, a crowd of people, like, the, the people were crowding the car, and they're standing on top of it, I'm like, I would have automatically stopped mm -hmm. the concert because there's a police car in the middle of what's happening mm -hmm. right now. And to think, we're, we're now getting to a point where we're having no concerts outside. Football games are resuming, and this is how you return to a concert. But I think that's exactly part of it, is that people were in for like two years or whatever, or a year and a half. And I think last summer, everyone was ready for, you know, hot girl summer. Everyone was yeah. ready to be out here yeah. and, like, to finally emerge after COVID. And the yeah. Delta variant hit us. Yeah. And so we didn't really have the summer we all wanted. So now the few things that are happening is, ha like, people are just, yeah. I don't know, going too hard. Yeah. Like, and like that's too hard. Um, no one should have no one should have to die. I think that's uh, a horrible way to die. There were very young people there. Really? Like one of the youngest ones is like a ten year old. Yeah, a ten year old. Yeah. Jesus. Mm -hmm. well, Y'all chill out. And, and um, it's funny because now there's like a viral video because Tiana Taylor must have had her concert last night, but uh, something was happening with one of her um, concert goers, and she stopped the concert and was like, "Y'all yeah. ain't finna Travis Scott me or oh, this. No. Yeah, this yeah. was just this is just just like uh, went viral. Maybe on the shade room I think this is else. one of those things of, like, diffusion of responsibility where, yeah. like, Travis might have seen something, but he's like, I'm not, like, I'm here to do the, con I'm not the guy who tells, yeah. like, says when the concert stops. Maybe some security saw it, and then they were like, I'm not the guy. And you know what I mean? Everyone wasn't the guy mm. who would say, hey, man, turn the lights on. Like, this is yeah. messed up. And so then you lead to 14 people die. Like, yeah. that's. I, I don't know. I don't know. I guess my thing is if you have power, knowing that people come to see you and your influence yep. is what's going to save someone, yeah. use it. Yeah. Use it. I mean, yeah, anyways, or what you got? Yeah, I mean, it's more depressing stuff. <laughs> um, so let's just, let's just keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. Uh, <laughs> do it. Yeah, so I, I wanted to talk about uh, this term slash movement called ADOS or uh, mm -hmm. African Descendants of Slavery. And it's essentially mm -hmm. black people who differentiate themselves from, like we are black people who are born in America and who are descendants of American slavery. And so we're different and have different struggles than like black people like me who are immigrants um, and like African nationals like who come to the US or Caribbeans. And so we should be treated differently and given priority when it comes to things like affirmative action, when it mm -hmm. comes to things like uh, reparations, like they should go to us because I can't say us because I'm not part of this. Not, not yeah, they should thing, go to yeah. people who are part of this ADOS. Um, and I learned about this term when I was watching a YouTube video of this um, uh, this guy from bah the Bahamas, Bahamian, <laughs> I think is the term. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he was saying, so he lived in Bahamas his whole life. He came to the U.S. and went to the University of Iowa. <laughs> oh, <okay>. <laughs> <laughs> and so places. he was, yep, exactly. And that was like his first exposure to America. But then mm. he like went after, I think he was saying like three months of basically this all white space. He went to his first like party with a bunch of black people like in like Iowa, right? Um, and so he goes and he's telling his story and he says the N word and people are like, you, you can't say that word because you're from the Caribbean. And so you like, you're not an ADOS you haven't lived in the US, all of that, like you're not allowed to say the N word. Interesting. And so um, like that's kind of where I want to start the conversation and then there's a crazy twist. Wait, but aren't we all descendants of slavery? Yeah, right? I, I mean, there was yeah. slavery in Haiti. <laughs> <laughs> there was slavery in, yeah, bro. Interesting, so would that term also apply to those who are full-blown citizens, black citizens? It's not right, because I've lived in this country for, I'm a, na I'm a yeah. naturalized citizen like of the US. Does that mean me? Or am I excluded from this, like, because I was born in Haiti, but then I've lived here most of my life? I don't know. I'd have to ask someone who's yes. ADOT. But the big kind of twist is that 
a lot of this rhetoric and a lot of the people who are pushing this are funded by right wing. Like they are literally surprise, surprise. Mm. Like the right wing <laughs> is like oh, wait, this why? Is so, so why now? Uh, so this was around the twenty twenty election where this came out. This term first came out in twenty sixteen, okay. never and then heard it of was it. like no, yeah, kind of resurrected slash pushed forward in the twenty twenty election because they were saying you should not vote for Democrats. You shouldn't vote for Joe Biden unless they have a specific like black agenda. Like unless they come out with here's the things that we're going to do for like ADOS specifically. Okay. And so this is right the wi- right wing. We're like, yeah, a way to get people to not vote for <laughs> Democrats, yeah. a way to split the black vote and to, you know, and biggin <laughs> is the word I'm going to use, uh, divisions <laughs> like between <laughs> black people. Like, So I guess the question is, are, mm, and this I, is probably like a basic question, but mm-hmm. are all the black people the same? Yeah, right. And that's the thing that I think, I find it so tricky and why it's hard for me to dismiss it is because, and we've seen this happen, I feel like on every episode of this show, mm-hmm. where you guys have a, had an experience that mm-hmm. I have not had. Yeah. Like, or there is there is a cultural divide. Yeah, certainly. Like, between, like, what you've had experienced and what I have experienced. And should that matter almost politically? Like, should that, does that animate the way we vote? Does that animate the, the way we make decisions? No, it's tough. <laughs> It is, especially when I think about it, because I don't, I don't necessarily think about it like, oh, I'm American because I was born here, and like you're Haitian. Like if I'm, if I'm just walking mm-hmm. and I see you, yeah. I'm like, oh, look at this black person, because mm-hmm. for me, I'm yeah. associating it to how close you are to whiteness in terms right. of America. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's how I associate it. So mm-hmm. I can't, for once, say that like, oh, I can't agree with this because. They're from such yeah, and right, such. Right. I can't invalidate that because who am I to say that they're not going to experience colorism in America because right. they are of a darker complexion? Yeah. Yeah. That I, me personally, it's right. not my cup of tea. I think to make this more poignant to our situation, um, think about the fact that Notre Dame like is uh, uh, admitting a lots of people who are African nationals, lots of people who are international students who are black but not a lot of like African Americans born in the US, right? Um, or like, are they, right? Like, I- is this divide this big? Because if you think about it for every spot <laughs> that like an African national like is, is, is here, that's like one less spot potentially, mm. right? And should we think of it in that term of like, this is a, f- a fight or a friction between these two, or is that just a BS? Which I think it's just a BS division. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of, yeah. Certainly. Uh- I'm also thinking about, uh, and I was pulling up this information here, there was one person in the Black Domers book named uh, Lemuel Joyner. Uh, and Lemuel is African American, and there's one student who was African. Lemuel introduced himself to this African student, and he was like, hey, what's wow. good, you know, hey bro, you know, whatever. And while swimming, I took notes of this, while swimming, Joyner introduced himself to an African student who then replied, I'm from Africa, I'm not an American Negro. So it makes me think like, there are differences at that time. I guess because now we've had so many things yeah, happen right. since, since then. Yeah. And this was like in, uh, this was in 1950 mm. uh, w- when this happened on campus. Mm. Um, you know, apartheid even happened. So okay. it m- makes me wonder. So even with all of the movements that we've had, at some point, do we give up our division or forfeit our division to have some kind of camaraderie? And do we exchange the same language or, you know, the same colloquialism or mm-hmm. how far do we go to say, yes, we are here in America, but there are some things of my culture that you have not experienced. So therefore, I'm still going to embrace that part, but I'm not going to separate myself so far to the point where it's like, mm-hmm. I'm not, we don't have anything in common. Yeah. And I think, and I hate to speak for like African nationals, like people yeah. from like Africa, because none of them are present currently. Yeah, I know. Um, but I think a lot of them have said that, like, like I grew up all my life in Nigeria or wherever, right? And then I came here, and this is when I became black. Because, oh. like, in Nigeria, which is majority black people, like, yeah. there's not a lot of the, like, daily racisms and daily, like, interactions with your race, I want to say. Because your race is what everyone else looks like. So we, there's no need to talk about it, yeah. to acknowledge it, to whatever, because every like the dominant class is black, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you come here in America, and now you have to every day be reminded you're black, you're black, you're black, because mm-hmm. people will treat you differently. Yeah. And so literally, and they're saying this not as a thing of like, 
oh, like, I didn't connect with my identity or none of it, like, as a thing of the way that black people are experiencing blackness in the U.S. is distinctly different than the way that, like, like me growing up in Haiti, again, all my role models were black. Everyone on TV is black, all of it. Like, yeah. so, right? And then coming here, and like, it is a different experience. Well, certainly. <laughs> specifically certainly. for, like, black people in America. Yeah. But it yeah. also is, like, like, I think the answer is, like, the Rainbow Coalition, right? It's, mm. it's more, like, like more uh, talking. Do you know what I mean? I like, like, more yeah. solidarity, yeah. more of that. And not less, and not more, like... Oh, I'm specifically like Haitian American, and so I don't deal with you guys who are Jamaican yeah. American, and I don't deal with you guys who are ADOS, yeah. and I don't right like that. I think more division is not the yeah. I think that also comes with conditioning uh, sometimes as well too, depending on who who you're around, mm -hmm. and what uh, maybe some values or ideals that that they you know they they keep um, near and dear to them because um, I don't know. Um, I, I still think that there, even though there are differences between also. We share a complexion, sometimes lighter, sometimes darker. Mm -hmm. Although we share a complexion in most cases, there are still some things that are very distinct to our upbringing and our culture that we should always embrace, mm -hmm. but not let too much of our differences keep us separated, yeah, especially absolutely. whenever you don't see many of us on campuses like, yeah. like this. Or we could be in Iowa. I mean, hey. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 but Indiana is just as bad. I but so, I mean, I, I, I don't know. Uh, we all have a space for everybody. I, I yeah. will say I was talking to one uh, alumni, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. just the past week, um, and she was saying that when she was here on campus a few years ago, she said, I saw an opportunity where I could have you know, got all the black students together, but she said it was difficult because you had um, the African Student Association, yeah. uh, BSA, BGSA, you had yeah. all these different ones. The Caribbean Association, she yep. was like, they're all different. And it's like, are we all different? I mean, I, I guess we are different. I don't know. It's, it's yeah, I don't it's, know. It's tricky. It's tricky to put together a coalition. Yeah. And it's tricky to, like, when we say terms like black people are not a monolith, like, there are implications like this mm -hmm. that, like, come into it that makes yeah. it hard to tie everyone together and get everyone in one, like, yeah. thrust because... We're having different experiences. Yeah, because I mean, honestly, at the end of the day, if you were never to open your mouth and we were never to hear anyone's accent, people would see you just right. by your color and they would classify I you as black. That's the thing that kind of makes me sad is that, like, is racism the thing that ties us together? <laughs> like, oh. is that right? Like, I, 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 is unfortunately, that it is. That is like that. putting us all in the same basket, and that's depressing. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> like when all your food be touching. I don't, I don't know. Uh, so, but I mean, I actually have no problem with that, but that's just me, though. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't yeah. know. It's just one of those things we'll, we'll have to sort of see how it develops um, over the course of the, the remainder of our time here at Notre Dame. But right. oh. um, anything else we have before we go? I don't know. Maybe I should try to come up with lighter topics. I'm <laughs> telling you. That ain't going to happen. You I don't know. Irby, I'll be like, thinking. I feel like you're over here with Black Joy and with, like, I'll be the trying. music. <laughs> and, with, and I'm like, but what up? The relations between. <laughs> yes. It's all a balance. About ADOS? <laughs> yes. I'll it's all a balance. But, but before we go, uh, I do want to uh, let everyone know that this is Ally Week. I got a, We got an email about that uh, uh, the week at Indy. So if you are checking this out, which I'm sure you are because you're listening to me speak, mm -hmm. uh, go out uh, to the events that we have here on campus. And also want to shout out to uh, Kate and Jeremy as well, too, for all of their hard work. So yeah. thank you so much for, Yay, for all of your work. I know you shouldn't expect that, right? <laughs> She's like, what? Yeah, uh, a lot of stuff. That we had a, <laughs> yeah, we had a dinner last week uh, at uh, er Erda's house. Yeah. Erda, uh, Erda's house. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to say it the right way. <laughs> and it was a lot of fun. Um, it was a lot of fun. Oh. But needless to say, y'all, thank you so much for checking us out. Make sure to like, share, subscribe. And we will be looking forward to seeing you next week. Have a good one. Oh, 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 oh.